Greetings brothers and sisters in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today our topic is Kithron Valley. The Valley of the Shadow of Death. So we will study detail about Kithron Valley and what Bible has a significant things over this place. Let's go with a prayerful way. Before studying Kidron Valley, we should know where it is geographically located. Here is a small geographical overview of Kidron Valley. In Jerusalem, there is a famous mountain called Mount Moriah or Temple Mount where God's holy temple is located. If you move further east, you can find Kidron Valley or famously called as Valley of Jehoshaphat. Then if you move further east, you can find Mount of Olives. In section view, you can find here, this is God's holy temple. Then for the right, you can find Valley of Kidron or Valley of Jehoshaphat, which connects between Mount Malaya and Mount of Olives. Okay, let's see what is the meaning for the Valley of Jehoshaphat. In Hebrew, it is called as Emak Yehoshaphat, which means the valley where Yahweh shall judge. So as a Christian, we should know what is the significance behind this valley of Jehoshaphat or Kidron Valley. Let's have a look over the general information. The Kidron Valley is either reference to the darkness or moriqueness of the water that periodically flows in that place. Kidron Valley is technically a stream where water runs through it only after the heavy rain. This location is associated in the Bible with the sorrow, judgment and death. Here you can find the current picture of Kidron Valley. So let's see what are the significant things about Kidron Valley. Firstly, a valley where idols and bodies of rebellious were crushed. Secondly, the valley where Yahweh shall judge. Thirdly, a valley where wicked shall be judged. So here, these are the three significant points we are going to discuss in this video. Let's see one by one. So firstly, a valley where idols and bodies of rebellious were crushed. During king's rule in Judea, whenever godly king brought revival and reformation in Jerusalem and Judea, they threw away the idols from God's temple. We can find these three kings, the three Judean kings did it. Firstly, King Asa, secondly, King Hezekiah, thirdly, King Josiah. All these three kings brought revival and threw away the pagan idols from God's temple into Kidron Valley because Kidron Valley is located very near to God's holy temple. So it acts as a drainage for kings. So let's look detail by biblical verse. During the time of King Asa, Bible says, also he removed Maha, his grandmother, from being queen mother because she had made an absence image of Asa. And Asa cut down her absence image and burnt it by Brook Kidron. During time of King Hezekiah, then the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the debris that they found in temple of the Lord to the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it out and carried it to the Brook Kidron. Finally, during the time of King Josiah, Bible says, and the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest of the second order, and the doorkeepers to bring out the temple of the Lord, all the articles that were made for Baal, for Ashraf, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them outside the Jerusalem. See, outside Jerusalem means outside the walls of Jerusalem, in the field of Kidron, and carried their ashes to Bethel. And verse 6 says, the wooden images from the house of the Lord to the brook Kidron outside Jerusalem 
burnt it at the brook Kitron. And for the verse 12 says, The house of the Lord, the king, broke down and pulverized there and threw it the dust into the brook Kitron. So here we can see three godly Judean kings brought revival in Jerusalem and Judea and threw all the idols away from God's temple into the Kitron Valley or famously called Valley of Jehoshaphat. So this is the first significant thing we see. All the idols are crushed in Kidron Valley. As we already seen, the Valley of Jehoshaphat means the valley where Yahweh shall judge, where God shall judge. So for this significance, we will see two examples. Firstly, from Old Testament, which happens in King David's life. When King David fled Jerusalem during Absalom rebellion, he crossed the valley of Kitron. In 2 Samuel, Bible says the king himself also crossed over the brook Kitron. So during this time, during the time of trouble, the faithful servant named called Eda talked with David. Bible says, but Eda answered the king and said, as the Lord lives, as my Lord the King lives, surely in whatever place my Lord the King shall be, whether in death or life, even there also your servant will be. Such a faithful statement he said to David. During the time of trouble, Eda said this faithful statement to David. So let's see the second example from New Testament, which happened in the life of son of David, that is Jesus Christ. He is a king of kings. Bible says, When Jesus has spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook of Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Jesus might have crossed this Kidron valley many times in his travel, especially on the night of his harvest. Jesus went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden of Gethsemane. During that night, Jesus felt the full weight of his impending death, so much that his sweat fell to the ground like a great drops of blood. All these suffering Jesus undergone because of us, because we have sinned and we have transgressed against his law, so he need to face God's judgment. That is, Yahweh shall judge God has judged because of our sin. So he paid the price of our sin. Are we going to say like either to Jesus like Jesus Christ, my Lord the King shall be, wherever in death or life, even that also your servant will be. We should say this statement to Christ because he has given his own life for us in the cross. Bible says, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him mistaken, smitten by God, that is, Yahweh has judged and affiliated, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So, God has judged Christ because of our sins. That is the second significance of Kitron Valley. The final significance of Kidron Valley is the valley where the wicked shall judge. In Revelation 14, God is talking about reaping the graves of the wrath. That is, he is going to judge the wicked people. It says, thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of wine of the earth, for her graves are fully ripe, which means God's wrath is going to pour out on this earth on the wicked people. So verse 20 says, And the wine press was trampled outside the city. Outside the city means already we have seen it's outside the city wall, that is Kidron Valley, and the blood came out of the wine press up to the horse bridles for 1,600 furlongs. But here it doesn't mention directly about Kidron Valley, but the same passage is described by Prophet Joel. 
let the nation be weakened and come upon the valley of Josephat, that is Kidron Valley, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nation, put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. The same passage what mentioned in Revelation is repeated in Joel chapter 3 by the name of Kidron Valley. So God is going to judge the wicked people in the place called Kidron Valley. If he didn't accept Christ's sufferings and Christ's grace, then we will face God's judgment. That is the third significant thing of Kidron Valley. If we accept Christ as our personal savior and understand his love, then the Lord's plan for our redemption will include a change in the valley of Kitron because he promised in Jeremiah 31 and the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields as far as the brook Kitron to the corner of the horse gate towards the east shall be holy to the Lord. It shall not be plucked up or thrown down anymore forever. The valley of Kitron with its sad history of idolatry, impurity, and condemnation, will one day be holy to the Lord, and God will forgive our wickedness and will remember our sins no more. So he has given this promise in Jeremiah 31. He will forget all our sin and cast out in a deep sea. Just the only thing is we need to come back to Christ and repent, and he will take care of us. In your life, if you are facing any dead valley situation, God has given a promise in Bible. Though I walk through the valley of that shadow of death, that is Kidron Valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Christ is with us. You are Lord and your staff, they comfort me. Christ will comfort us. May Lord bless you. Amen.